What's going on? What's going on? Entertain the geeky. <laughs> so we we teased last week about doing our favorite video games, and both of us actually came to a a different way to do it. Yeah, but it wasn't necessarily uh, this is the greatest thing that God ever made or whatever. So how did how did you go about your criteria with this? So uh, the, the the thing I the problem I have with making top five lists is if you're really looking at what are the best things of all time? Mm -hmm. It's hard to look at the generations that preceded where we are now because while those things were good in their own right, they have been blown out of the water by new things. So it, 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 it's hard to even go back and say, what's the best Super Nintendo game? Is that even going to make the top five list? So instead, I went with the eras of gaming. Uh, the first console that I really got into that I was actively like looking for new games to play on was the Super Nintendo. So I did Super Nintendo. Uh, the next thing that really blew me away was when gaming entered the 3D space. So I did uh, my number one pick from the N64 PlayStation era. Uh, and I think the next big leap for me was PlayStation 3. So the last three on my list come from the 3, 4, and the 5 era. Ooh. Okay. And I could I thought about cutting it to just two, three, and four because five is very new. But then when I started thinking about the games I've played on five, I'm like, nah, there's a there's a best game on five, at least so far. So you did it that way, and I did it based off of the amount of time I was willing to spend with the game. Sure. So yeah. I went through and I was like, okay, what's the game that I've probably played the most or enjoyed just flat out enjoyed playing the most? Sure. Yeah. And uh would play through multiple times just because I found it pleasurable. Yeah. I think that's the difference between you and me. Like I will play through games multiple times just to do it. Right. Like, I mean, I think I once a year go through all three mass effect games. They're not on my list, but they're great games Interesting. and I just go through them. See, and I wouldn't. Yeah. I'd no, be like, I, no, I fucking came, saw, conquered. It's <laughs> over. That game ended years ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's God of War Ragnarok that just came out. I mean, I finished that game to 100% and then just immediately started playing it again. And then finished it a second time to 100% and then just started playing it. I played it like three times in a row right after I got Holy it. Holy shit. You've already been through it that many times. I've been through it five times now. Oh, my God. Initially, the game just came out. Yeah, initially I went through it three times. Uh right after I got it. That's so. freaking wild. Eh. I'm weird though. Like I am, I am a weird person in that regard. So you and Capuano are just, uh, in love with video games. Yeah. And but, it's, but Capuano is more like you. He'll play a game once and he'll put it down and he won't go back to it for a year or more. Right. And then maybe he'll go back to it. <laughs> but, but seeing him and he's like, ah, uh, I have to go, and do another playthrough of the Kingdom Hearts games again. <laughs> yeah. And you're like... <laughs> because the new one's coming out. You're like, so you have to do it? Like, okay, yes. cool. More have power to, to you. <laughs> it's like, it's part of his uh, life ritual, is yeah. what I'll call it. It's not... Mm -hmm. it, it's so funny. And Cabuano and I are very lucky. Uh, our addiction to video games is not frowned upon by our significant others. <laughs> Thank God. Right? Yeah. They actually quite enjoy it. Uh uh, I know that Shannon kind of does her own thing sometimes, but she is, I'm assuming, like Corey in that regard, where a game that has a good, compelling story, she will enjoy watching, uh, you know, that story unfold. And that's most games nowadays. I do better with storylines in games if I'm not playing it, but watching somebody else play sure. it. Yeah. Because if I'm playing it, I'm just like, I got to fight. I can't I'm, time to fight. I, I have a hard time watching other people play games. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to video games cuz like all I see when I watch people play games is well that was a mistake, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's like I just I can't help it. I'm a little bit I'm look, I'm not a snob in most things. I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty chill, I'm pretty laid back. Total but, elitist when it comes to games. But I cannot games. watch people play video games. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Even if that's someone sitting in the room with me, right? I've definitely handed the controller to other people in the room and just sitting there going, why are you doing it like that? That's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it like that. <laughs> that's God why, damn it. That's why you just died. <laughs> See that? That's why you died. <laughs> if you weren't such a piece of shit, you'd be better at this. <laughs> no, I'm not super mean about it. I just, I get annoyed. For, sure, fair. Watching I, people play I mean, video that's, games. That's okay. I get that. I get that. Um, <laughs> So let's let's dive into the list then. Dive on in. Number five, 
Uh, so I did mine in an ascending order from oldest generation to newest generation. Okay. It's not necessarily a, because they're all number ones in my book. Okay. Right? Okay. They're so all, the, num- you're <laughs> all number one. You're all number one. <laughs> so the era I started with was the first time I really got into gaming and again was actively searching for games. Uh, and that was the Super Nintendo. Uh, and I remember going to Blockbuster like every weekend with my my allowance money or my, oh, yeah. my lawn mowing money or whatever it was to rent a game, right? Uh, so for me, the game that really just blew me away in that generation was Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Okay. It is, I mean, look, I played a lot of games during that era, Mario's and Final Fantasies and various other things. But Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past took the concept of the original Legend of Zelda game from Nintendo, which like I said, I played when I was like six. I never beat that game when I was a child. I beat it later as an adult. Um, beat it when I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> but it took the concept of that game and applied it to a narrative-driven experience that I had never seen before in a video game, where I was really compelled by the characters and the story and, and, and saving the world from a great evil. So it just, and also, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Legend of Zelda. I've played every Legend of Zelda game with the exception of, I think, like one, no, two, because they were on a terrible system and they were goofy. <laughs> but uh, A Link to the Past, yeah, just like it had everything. It was, I was a little kid when I played it. It made me really feel like a hero saving the world from some great evil. And I think that's why Link has always been a silent character, right? It's so we can project your own voice onto him, ourselves yeah. into that character. And so, yeah, it just it took me to a new world when I was a little kid. Okay, okay. So number five for me was a tie. Okay, and it's two games that I've spent so much time playing, sure, but have a total love hate relationship with. Um, first one being Destiny, the original Destiny game. Okay. Had some cool storyline in it. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with the PvP. Uh, gameplay in and of itself was pretty good. Sure. The issue was uh, how they did weapon rolls and the flavor of the week meta bullshit. Sure. <clears throat> Games as a service thing where you got a, a yeah. season 27. Now you have to grind out this pulse rifle. <laughs> and it's right. like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but you might not get the roll that you want. So you're going to have to put some more time into getting a better roll if you don't get the one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking gun. Right. It should do the same thing as the other gun. Just like it. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So it was. it's that in Overwatch. Okay. I, I, fu- I love PvP. Love sure. PvP. Um. I hate how we patch games now. It's sure. gross. And there are simple math equations that you can do to see how about um, characters in games are going to act. So if you're talking about like damage per second, well, you can say, hey, nothing can exceed this number. And if it does, we have to dummy it down a Nerf little. It. Yeah. Um, and you do that in beta. You don't do it when you make something go live. Well, now we're in this like weird spot where we'll up a character. Oh, he's too good. We'll nerf him. And then we're going to up these other characters to try to match him. Oh, shit. But we made one of them way too good. And it's like, stop, man. Yeah. You're better. You're better than that. <laughs> Talking directly to you, game developers. Yeah. <laughs> Bungie, Blizzard, let's get it together. So like that's I I love to play the games I love the PvP aspect of them but sure. man there are things that drive me crazy about them but I have so many hours in them yeah like just this current competitive season of Destiny I think I'm like sixty or eighty hours into it yeah and oh it ends tomorrow sure <laughs> yeah I think that's the difference between you and me is I don't like player versus player stuff I've never been into that. Really? So I've never gotten into like battle royales or, and I like, I, I liked that kind of stuff before what games have become. Mm-hmm. I was the first person to sit on my couch with three friends and play golden eye. Oh yeah. Love doing that. So much fun. But I think it's just my own anxiety about like playing a game where some eight year old is going to call me a noob and, and, <laughs> and threaten to kill my mom, <laughs> you know, that I just can't get behind. I just, I can't get behind that concept. <laughs> I knew a kid my my friend Danny's uh, stepson, literally, when, I met him when he was eight years old, and his Xbox screen name was I'm Eight. 
so that everybody knew they were getting owned by an eight-year-old because he was very good at Halo. Fucking I mean, like, this, troll. This kid destroyed everybody at Halo. He was very good at it. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so he just put, put it right front and center. I'm eight years old. You suck. And I'm the best. <laughs> Should have been better. Should have been better, brah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, so I think the next era that really changed everything for me was when games entered the 3D space. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a tie for this one as well, Ooh. which is weird because you also had a tie uh, between N64 and PlayStation. So PlayStation, it's Metal Gear Solid. Good game. Because Metal Gear Solid, yeah, was was kind of the first time I ever felt like uh, I'm watching a movie while I'm playing this video game. This oh, yeah. is not just a game. This is a movie. This is an engaging you know, emotional narrative driven experience that has a full voice cast that aren't phoning it in. Cause we'd heard voices in game, other 3d games and stuff. It always kind of felt like they were phoning it in. Like you'd have a big action moment and the NPC that's setting you up for it. would be like, so we're going to go over that hill and we're going to kill everybody. It just felt like they were phoning it in because right. they didn't take it seriously as an art form. Metal Gear Solid was the first time I remember feeling that. That I felt like, no, these actors are actors. They're True trying cinematics. to bring their characters yeah. to life in this in this digital space. Uh, and, it, you know, graphically, I mean, it just blew me away. That was the first time I remember people looking like people. And they don't look perfect, <laughs> right? When you compare right. it to now <laughs> and you go back to then, it looks like garbage. Right. It's total dog shit compared to but modern But we didn't graphic. have now then. No, we didn't. <laughs> That was, so it was the greatest thing you'd ever seen. That was the seen. cream of the crop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then on the other end is N64. Uh, I had both. I didn't have a PlayStation right away. My, my buddy did, though. So mm -hmm. And I spent the night at his house a lot. We'd hang out. Uh, so we would just go. I would just rent PlayStation games and take them over to his house. <laughs> That's how I played most of my early PlayStation games. But I had a Nintendo 64. Uh, and it's Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Of course it is. It's uh, a good game. I mean, as I said, I'm a Zelda file anyway. Like I will play anything Zelda. Um, but that was so different. I mean, it it just Nintendo 64 was an early adopter of 3D. PlayStation came really closely after, mm -hmm. but they were the early adopter of trying to find how do you take these AAA titles, these Mario's, your Zeldas, your your Mario Karts, all of that, and put that in a 3D space and make it work. And Super Mario 64 was the first game I played. It came with my console. Remember when consoles yep. came with games? With like one. Man, yeah. But still, you gave me a free game. No, that right? was... Dude, we'll come back to that. We'll yeah. come back to that. Go on. Uh, and Super Mario 64 was, was the perfect example. Like, it was perfect. I mean, it was just such a good jump from the 2D to the 3D. It felt good. It felt like Mario. And it, and it was mind-blowing i mean like i said you can look at him now and he looks like crap but it was mind-blowing we it was children. fucking beautiful then and so the next that when i saw that and when i got to understand what this was going to be in a 3d space the first thing on my mind was man i wish i could play a zelda game in 3d and then they did it they made <laughs> ocarina of time a couple years later and it got delayed a couple of times yeah even back then guys games got delayed if you want to whine about it now, I hear people, I hear young people whining about it. Like, oh, I can't I stand game delays. It. Games have always been getting delayed. But wouldn't you rather let them spend a little more time perfecting what the game is so that when they release it, it's perfect, hey, it's ready to I go? Hey, if I didn't have to know there was a patch during week one. <laughs> we didn't have no patches back then. No. You got a fucking You got cartridge, what you got. Here it that is. That was it. The way God intended it. <laughs> If it had glitches, they're always going to be glitches. Right. Yeah. If you very carefully jump against this wall, you will fall into it and you cannot get out. Good luck. Right. <laughs> Go or, back to your previous save Or you save can point. do what those speedrunners have done and you can exploit it where you oh, can yeah. beat Mario 64 in like three minutes. Right. <laughs> That's True. just how games were. Um, but so yeah, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time took it to a whole new level. I mean, it was the it was the dungeon crawling. It was the the epic storytelling you know, that one didn't have a voice cast, but it didn't matter. I had come become so accustomed as a gamer to reading little text boxes. I didn't even care. Um, and they found a way to make all of the things that are Zelda work with that N64 controller, which, by the way, only had one control stick on it. Right? Like, we, we are so used to having two now, one for, you know, pitch and one for yaw. Yeah, that one 
middle joystick. Yeah, it just had one joystick and a D-pad and some buttons. So they really had to find unique and interesting ways to control cameras, right? So the camera would f- would have to follow you in a, in a precise way. Uh, you had the, the little Z button that would automatically like yep. lock the camera behind you and lock on to the enemy that you were facing. Um, but also I got to ride a horse. Like I was the first time in a game I ever got to ride a horse. I was like, "What? This is my horse? I can just call him with a little with a little tune anytime I need him." Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful game. Uh, final boss, little little light, not as challenging as I would have expected. But that's something I think we've come to expect of Zelda games from the 3D era on. Uh, there's always going to be a really cool battle to lead into the final boss, but the final boss yeah, is kind of a pushover. <laughs> I mean that, or you're just so badass at that point. No, I was, I was not. Like I was a child still. <laughs> I was not good at games then. <laughs> All right, so going yeah. going down in order for me, I I realized making this list that um, I have a Nintendo issue. <laughs> you so, don't like Nintendo. I love Nintendo. Uh, okay. So for the most part, that's like if I'm going to console game. That's my poison. Sure. So Mario Party for the GameCube, Mario Party 5. Sure. Is one of my all-time favorites. Love that game. I spent like an entire summer when I was 16 years old. There was a Wii out at that point in time. <laughs> um, but I played the fuck out of that Mario Party for GameCube. Sure. So it was Mario Party 5. The Mario Party 8 is, I think, the one that was out for the first one that came out for Wii. Very good. It was fun. Yeah. But God damn it. That GameCube controller hit some kind of sweet spot with those mini games, and I fell head over heels in love. I cannot even tell you how many, because you can set how many times you go around the board and all that. I can't yeah, yeah. tell you how many times I've been around those stupid boards <laughs> on that game. I mean, I've played a lot of Mario Party in my day. I'm not going to deny it. the fun of it. <laughs> when it's, uh, I, there's a social aspect of Mario Party anytime you play. I've never played it by myself. No. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah it's boring by yourself. Right. <laughs> so, well, We're I, competing with each I, other. I think they have some kind of like story mode or something. No, there is through. solo mode. But yeah. if I'm going to steal a star from one of my rivals, I want I that want, rival to be sitting next to me on I the couch. I want you to be right there. And <laughs> so, I want to see the, the light the pain leave in your, face. your eyes. <laughs> As I get that star, but then I think that I think five is the first one where they were doing bonus stars. So like if you collected the most coins as you went around the board yeah. and that was like, or the if you ultimate, won the most mini yes, games, yeah. that was the ultimate fuck you to whoever you were playing. Right. You're like, yeah, you may have picked up more stars, but <laughs> watch this dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pick up two bonus stars right here at the end of the game. Just because. <laughs> and then, you, and then you did and you would win because of it. Yeah. And you were, you know, just swinging the big dick at that point. You were so strong and powerful. And Best thing about Mario Party coming down to the wire of, of stars was if you had the same amount of stars, but you won because you had more coins. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've literally had two more coins than rivals before and won because of those two coins. Isn't that incredible, though? Yeah, it's winning. <laughs> Doesn't matter if I win by an inch or a mile. Right. Winning is winning. You lost. You still lost. Sucks to suck. And that's that's the <laughs> shit that you say. You're not like, man, you fought a good game. You're like, man, fuck you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah. That, that was that was always the problem that my parents tried to force me to play like sports and stuff when I was a kid. And that was always my biggest problem is the other team would beat the shit out of us. And then we had to walk along and shake all their hands. Like, I don't want to do that. No. You're, you're, you're making me a hypocrite. That's what I'm you're gonna doing. Play a video I game. hate these people. I'm going to play <laughs> they video games. They just kicked our asses. With my buddy. And then I'm going to say the worst shit that I can dream up to him. <laughs> exactly. Because I care. Exactly. No, that's exactly what it is. So, yeah, the Mario Party franchise is a lot of fun. But particularly Mario Party 5 for GameCube is... Sure. Uh, something that I have spent an ungodly amount of time playing. Absolutely. All right. What's your next? Uh, so the next era I jumped to was uh, PS3 because uh, PS2 and GameCube are great. There's no doubt. And if uh, and I have a couple of honorable mentions we'll talk about at the end from those eras. Um, but uh, I jumped to the PS3 because the PS3 was another huge leap forward in what gaming was. Mm-hmm. It was a big beefy console that had a fan that sounded like a jet engine. Like (laughs) it was a leap forward. And I think a lot of that hinged on them putting a lot of their eggs in the Blu-ray basket because that was not necessarily going to be the standard at that time. Because if you remember when that console came out, it was Blu-ray 
And then HD it was HD DVD. DVD. And Xbox had the HD DVD. Exactly. Yes. Sony took a chance on placed or on Blu-ray with PlayStation 3 and it actually lost them a lot of money. So do you in do the you, early days of that console's lifespan? So do you know why that is? Why they chose to go Blu-ray? Yes. I think they owned Blu-ray. They owned Blu-ray. Yeah. They, that's why the PS2 came with the DVD player because Sony owned the patents for DVD. Right. So everybody was paying Sony for DVD and now they make this second push basically because they're like we've done this before we know how this works yeah and the cheapest way to get a fucking dvd player at that point in time was to was buy a, to PlayStation. Get a playstation 2 yeah and the cheapest way to get a blu-ray player was to buy a playstation 3 100 <laughs> percent. and it's it, it was brilliant by them because yeah. they have such a massive market share and guess what if a parent can buy a blu-ray and watch it on little billy's uh game machine right why not? But imagine, imagine if Blu-ray had not become the standard. The PlayStation 3 probably would have fallen by the wayside, and maybe Sony would not have had the investment capital to keep making consoles. That same thing happened to Sega. The Dreamcast was far behind the technology of its time, and it got left in the dust when PlayStation 2 and Xbox came out almost a year later. Was it, uh, Dreamcast I, came out in 1999. I remember because it came out on 9999. That was, oh, that was okay. a big push to See, get it out on that I day. thought Dreamcast was a wonderful console. It was, but it couldn't play DVDs. That's a fair it point. It didn't have a DVD capability. Yeah. And PlayStation 2 and Xbox came out almost a year later, and they did. Now, the Xbox did it terribly because you had to buy that stupid remote to play DVDs on it. But the PlayStation, you could just use the controller. I couldn't, be, I couldn't believe the Xbox took off the way it did, honestly. I mean, I can. They had, had some good exclusive early on. Oh, Halo, Halo changed the game. Fucking backer. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. I mean, it's Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. So again, that's a, a long way of Neither saying, right? Like in yeah. that era of the PlayStation Three, we took a huge leap forward, and I think a lot of that had to do with Blu-ray because not only was it playing Blu-rays, but we were using Blu-ray technology to increase visual fidelity mm -hmm. in games. Um. So the place for the me, the PlayStation Three, The Last of Us. And I'm Ooh. not just saying that because it's timely. I know people out there will think that. Uh, the show is great. I'm not denying. It's been, it's been a very fun show so far. I, I've enjoyed every bit of it. But I played the video game the day it came out. I was very excited about it. It was one I had been following because those were that was also you know the early days where uh, the things that were happening at conventions were ending up online shortly thereafter. Oh somebody God. was sitting in the audience with their cell phone taking yep. a picture or video. <laughs> Um, so I was absorbing every scrap of information I could. I was very excited about that game. Not because I had any particular love for Naughty Dog, but because I have a particular love for post-apocalyptic scenarios. Sure. I had been a Resident Evil fan all of my life. The Last of Us was the first game that, uh, you know, made me go, oh, somebody's coming along to challenge Resident Evil, right? Because it felt that same way, but arguably was a better game. Uh, and it's compelling. I mean, it is a story that, made me feel genuine emotion. That is probably one of the early times I remember a game making me feel scared and tense and sad and happy and elated. Uh, it just, it's, it's like any good movie you've ever watched, right? Where, where it's got its ups and downs. It's got those levels of emotion. It punches you in the gut. Gets you with emotionally the story. engaged. Yes, yeah. with the story it's telling. And again, it sounds timely, right? The TV show is great. Um, but whether they had made a TV show or not, this still would have been from that era, my number one game of well, all the, the of that time. The only reason the TV show got made is because of the wild success of that game. It, they are very successful. Uh, you know, the second one came along, which prompted them to remake the first one and release right. a remade version of it on PS five. Uh, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant story. It's timeless. It's one of those stories of, you know, yeah, there is this danger of these monstrous things that are trying to kill everybody and they're spreading their infection by biting people like a zombie would. But that's the background. It's really about the emotion of these characters and the journey that they go on together and how that journey changes their perspectives, right? Joel, you know, uh, spoilers for a, a long ago game at this point, um, but Joel loses his daughter. Mm -hmm. Ellie becomes the daughter he didn't know he wanted back because he had shut himself off from that. But through Ellie, he sees someone to protect. He gets those feelings of being a father again, and that changes him. Ellie didn't really know her parents, and she's kind of a loner, and she's kind of a goofy little kid. And through Joel, she finds in somebody that she can trust, somebody that 
won't leave her. Somebody that will always be by her side, protecting her and helping her and, and caring for her. And through that, you know, and I won't even talk about the ending of the game because there's probably people out there that are watching the television show and don't know the games. Right. I would imagine some people are like that. Um, but it winds to a conclusion at the end of that first game that punches you right in the gut and makes you make choices that are hard. And you watch these characters deal with the fallout of this and you know that some, a wedge has now been placed between them. And then we, we'll go into the second game and we'll figure out how to fix that. But the game ends with a, oh no, it's all falling apart. Which is also an interesting way to end a game. Usually everything's happy, we're right. safe, we've saved the day. No, this ends with a, oh my God, it's all going to fall apart. The love they have, the, the things they're building, they're, they're threatening them with this ending. And that's something that I'd never seen getting to the end of that game and going. Yeah, that is that is a I, cliffhanger sad. going into season two. Right, like I'm basically. sad yeah. now at the end of this game that has been one of the most breathtaking, uh, amazing games I've ever seen. Uh, that was also the first time in gaming I remember being blown away by the fact that the actors are putting on mocap suits and they're actually acting out these cutscenes. This isn't just animators creating these models. No, these people put the, the weird gray suits on with the, with the green dots yep. on them and they're acting these things out together on a set. That's, that's amazing. That's like a movie. You're making a movie, right? <laughs> you know, now, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just, so that for me, that was upper echelon of the, of the PlayStation three cream, era. Of, the crop. Yeah, cream yes. of the crop. Yeah. Um, my number three is <laughs> God awful, but I have spent so much time with it and I, any day of the week, if this is available to play when I sit down to just kind of veg out a little bit, sure, I will fucking do it. And it's Excite Bike for the NES. <laughs> I avoided putting any NES games on this I, list. I know. We talked about you it outside. You went Excite Bike. I did. <laughs> I remember <coughs> being a kid with my NES sitting there with that god awful controller. Me, 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 me. You had to hold A and B so you didn't overheat. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no, I had an oil slick. And, like, just going through it, going through it, going through it. And I'm like, man, it was such a dumb game, but I, I put so much fucking time into it. <laughs> Love that stupid game. And it was, I loved it so much that my mom actually played that one with me. And Weird. I don't think I ever got my mom to play I any game know. that wasn't Harry Potter so, themed. So she sat down <laughs> in my bedroom with me because my this was a point of contention. So my parents are divorced. My dad had bought me a TV so that I could play my Nintendo in my room. Sure. Totally cool. Freedom. My mom didn't want me to have a TV in my room, but I remember her sitting down with me in my room and playing Excite Bike for a few hours one day. Jeez. And it was cool as shit. She's like, this is great. <laughs> and we had a blast, man. So yeah, sure. Excite Bike is it was a big one for me. I know they did Excite Bike 64, but that It's it, not the same. It's not. Like no. that stupid 2D thing where you're well, yeah, and you can literally overheat your bike. Like it what a weird mechanic in a Nintendo ridiculous. game. We would add a little realism, your bike can overheat. Yeah. What? That sounds boring. <laughs> it was so dumb. God damn it. I love that game. And like to this day, if I get the opportunity to play Excite Bike, I will totally play that dumb shit. It's like Galica. We've played we've all played Galica at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Is it the most fun in the world? No. no. Is it cool? Yeah. yeah. Is it a great time suck? Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah you can lose hours in them. This little yeah, shoot the little and that's exactly what Excite Bike is, but it's yeah. less stressful sure. because the fate of the world doesn't hang in the balance. <laughs> You're just gonna win a race, right? <laughs> it's just me, the little dirt bike guy. <laughs> when the beautiful thing, Nintendo didn't false advertise with it. So if you look at the cartridge for that game, it is this horrible pixelated image that you will be seeing in game. Yeah, they didn't put some kick ass picture of some dude on some dirt bike or anything like that. They're like, hey, this is the shit you're about to see. Get ready for it. And right. they're like, oh when, wow. When box art's honest with you. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> well, because if you look at the Castlevania fucking uh, cartridge, oh, no. it's this beautiful artwork and stuff. And you get into the game, and it's this it's fucking excite bike with Conan. Like sure. it looks like ass. Yeah. Um, but everything did at that point in time. So you weren't mad at it. 
Right. But, but yeah, the game was just well represented on the cartridge. And then once you plugged it into the console or put it in the console, you could just get lost in it. And it was a, uh, it was very freeing for your mind because it was a menial set of things that you were sure. doing just enough to slightly challenge you, but not enough to stress you. Right. And I love it for it. I just never would have expected. And I, I think I talked about this earlier. I just never would have expected a Nintendo game to be look. Nintendo is great. There is yeah. no doubt. Right. But that's the problem. Like I said, as we jump to new eras, everything else just gets left in the dust. We don't oh, even yeah. think about that shit anymore. You know what I mean? Totally. <laughs> totally. Excite Mike. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? But that's one of them. I mean, I, I could have done duck hunt too. The original duck. Hunt. Oh my God. Were, I, you, were you one of those guys that sat right up on the TV so that you would never miss? No, no, I'm not a piece of shit. Oh, um, whatever. Fuck you. you. Fucking cheater. Uh, <laughs> I'm not missing. I'm right here. Pew, pew. I don't know how to shoot guns. I'm eight. <laughs> my, uh, so my kids hooked my Nintendo <clears throat> up to a modern flat screen. They don't work with the gun. Really? Yeah. Flat screens don't work with the gun? No. No, it has to. That's a weird technological, like. Advancement? Yeah. Because- no, like, but, but like the technology at the time, we guess, I guess we just. We worked with what we had, and so, now that it's evolved, everything is left in the dust. I think it has to use with uh, infrared and tube placement in the TV. Oh, my God. That's so weird. But, yeah, modern TVs, because it's an LED display or L- LCD panel or whatever, doesn't work the that's same. so weird. So they will not pick up that gun. Well, now I know why Duck Hunt's not on my Switch. <laughs> <laughs> right. But with the switch, you could do something to where it tracks. You oh, know, yeah, I guess you could. could because the, they the, were clever this enough. This is to weird, right? Like, I never play it like that. I have my pro controller now. I'm never using those joy cons oh, dude, anymore. <laughs> I think the switch like is hands down the most brilliant console ever. Um, it's, it's pretty good. It's it's incredible. It's taken the things Nintendo has always excelled at and combined them. Yeah. Well, oh, you like tablets, you stupid fucks. Here you go. Here's a tablet with controllers attached to it. By the way. While you're out in public, you can play this. You can take your controllers off and share it with a stranger next to you. Absolutely. That's yeah. freaking sick, dude. It's yeah. so brilliant. Bust so, out some old school couch co-op type stuff. Anything, man. Yeah. I love it. I think it's such a good machine for what it is. It's not powerful. Yeah. It's running. I think the original version was running a NVIDIA Tegra 2 chipset, which is a phone processor. Oh, sure. That's yeah. old. I think that's why a lot of people have been clamoring for a new Switch. Like, just do a Switch 2. They did a slight upgrade recently. Yeah, the, yeah, but it was the, mostly the, the AMOLED display. Yeah, it was the, the the fidelity and stuff like that. Um, okay, so for me, uh, the last two games, I mean, the last three games, right? It's it's a PS3 game, it's a PS4 game, and it's a PS5 game. Okay. Um, because while I love Nintendo, and you know, again, I've got some honorable mention things I'll talk about for for Switch and and Wii and stuff, but. Uh, PlayStation really like I am a Nintendo kid for sure, but PlayStation just keeps making better stuff as we go along. Every new generation of PlayStation brings something that makes me go, wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, And (laughs) I own most of the games on my list. still. I still have my copy of Legend of Zelda Link to the Past from Super Nintendo. You know, I still have my, my original Metal Gear Solid and Ocarina of Time cartridge and my Metal Gear Solid disc. Um, and so as I was talking about this podcast with my wife last night, she was trying to guess. She was like, oh, can I guess? Because she sits That's and adorable. she watches me play games. You guys are fucking cute as shit. <laughs> so I got to the PlayStation 4 and she was like, oh, it's this. And oh, it's this. And I was like, nope, nope. And while we were sitting in the living room, I said, it's, it's on the shelf. I'm looking right at it. And so she just walks over there and starts going through them. And I'm like, well, so you don't know. That's what we're saying. You just, she, she could not figure it out. And it is a weird one, I will give you. But there's a real specific reason why it is. And it's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order from Respawn and EA. Okay. EA had less to do with it, which I was happy about. I think everybody Respawn was happy about that. great at what they do. <clears throat> um, and Jedi Survivor comes out in under a month at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited about that. But... The reason Jedi Fallen Order is on my list is because LucasArts was such an amazing company that didn't just make Star Wars games. They made all kinds of different games that were all very unique and good in their own right. Uh, When Disney came along, they closed LucasArts. And Mm -hmm. that was a huge blow to anyone who had played any of the LucasArts games, let alone the Star Wars games, which are fantastic. I mean, everyone from the Nintendo 64 or Super Nintendo era all the way up through, they're great games. They are. 
Um, I mean, Shadows of the Empire was one of the coolest. It made me feel like Han Solo, right? Uh, I mean, you're playing Dash Rendar, but Jedi Power Battles, sure, incredible game. Jedi yeah. Academy, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. Uh, and 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 that actually ties into why I think Jedi Fallen Order is such a great game because it was the first time since Lucas Arts had stopped that I felt like a Jedi. And the last time that it happened was a game from Lucas Arts, and it was Jedi Academy Two Jedi Knight. That was the last time I remember playing a game that made me feel like I was a Jedi. Uh, and Cal Kestis made me feel like I was a Jedi. I was, I was, I'm with him. I'm engaged in his story. Not to mention it did something that I never would have expected it to do. All the games, Star Wars games that had come before that, where you're playing as a Jedi, whether it's, uh, you know, Shadows or whether it's uh, Knights of the Old Republic mm -hmm. or Jedi Academy or any of those games, your lightsaber is this fully upgradable thing that you can make more powerful and you can change its color and all of that. But that's not what a lightsaber is. A lightsaber is a very utilitarian item, right? It's not functionally upgradable. No, it's a pocket knife. It's it's yeah. it's one thing and it does one thing. Yeah. And it does it well. It's elegant. And Jedi Fallen Order told us that. While you can change the look of your hilt and the color of your blade, the lightsaber is never going to level up. It's always just going to be a lightsaber. Lightsaber is a lightsaber. Because that's what it is, yep. right? Like it doesn't get better. It doesn't get worse. It's just always a lightsaber. And that was refreshing to me in a, in an era or in in games in general. Your weapons and stuff that you get in the game, you want to upgrade them. You want to make them better. You make them more badass throughout the game as you go. But that's not what a lightsaber is. Right. It's not a gun that you can add attachments to. You know what I mean? Like, right, it's not right. that thing. And so this game made me feel like for the first time since LucasArts had closed down, Star Wars is going to be okay in games. It's going to be okay. Guys, this is it, right? And it's a Dark Soul, and I hate Dark Souls. It's a Dark Soul. The difference is it's a Dark Soul that actually has a difficulty slider. Okay, okay. <laughs> Where if I want to just play in story mode, I can. I can just enjoy the story of the game without a super punishing terrible challenge coming out of every single enemy you encounter. Right. I, you know, I want bosses to be challenging, but I should be mowing stormtroopers down like they're nothing. Right. They're stormtroopers. They can't even aim. <laughs> right. <laughs> or droids or whatever it is. Right. These things should not be a challenge. And that's a Dark Souls thing. Everything you come across is a challenge. Whether the lowest little goblin man to the biggest dragon on the top of the tower, everything's this huge challenge. <laughs> So it's a dark soul, but it's a dark soul that you can turn down, you can tone it that's, down, and you can change. That's fucking sweet, though. And I am uh, when we did our our list last week, I actually did not mention Jedi Survivor. I forgot but that is coming in less than a month, and I'm very excited. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> All right. So uh, next game of mine is a PC game, but I'm very specific about the point in time which I enjoyed the most, and it was Vanilla World of Warcraft. What do you mean by vanilla? It like was before there were any original? expansions. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when the level cap was 60, it was a big deal to reach that level cap. Like if you saw somebody strolling around town that was a level 60, you were like. They had the little level 60 whatever like, above their God head. God damn. <laughs> There's <And> a God. <laughs> one, here's the thing that was crazy about it. So, okay, one, I'm going to talk about just the vastness of the world because this was my first open world experience, and I think they were one of the games to do it uh, early on and have it sure. be as big as it was. Yep. I, um, when I first started playing the game, I picked a race that was located on an isolated area of the map. It was basically like a uh, Australian like continent. Sure. I'm there and I'm like, fuck dude, I need to get to the main world where I know everybody is. It's a hike, bro. Sure. It is a hike. I can't fly because I've not visited any flight masters to get flight paths. Right. I don't have any money to even pay them to fly around. <laughs> I have to hike all the <coughs> fucking way. So I'm walking and, oh, 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 and this random player somewhere out in the world, his name was Wolfhawks. I played with this guy until the day I stopped playing. Um, Wolfhawks is like, are, are you Okay. And I was like, no, man, I'm getting fucked up by everything. <laughs> and he's like, I will take you to Stormwind. And I'm like, come, my child. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you, Wolfhawks. <laughs> so Wolfhawks 
takes me across continent. Now, when you're low level in this game, you pull aggro from evil things that are running around you. Of course. Because they can fuck you up. So mm -hmm. they see me coming. I died multiple times. This took like four hours. This dude, this real human, took like four hours to take me from one edge of the continent to another just so, and he's like, hey, I'm going to try to make sure you hit all the flight paths on the way, little one. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm he became like, your World of Warcraft mentor. Went, I was like, I love you. <laughs> I love you so much, Wolfox. Oh, my God. <laughs> so just how big and vast the world was blew my mind there. And like that being my introduction to it was insane. But then getting to encounter people that were high levels, um, and it was a big deal to get that level. Now, there were people that were power gamers or whatever, so sure. they would power level to that once they figured it out. But it was a big deal to cap. And then once you did cap, there was a whole nother game being played. Like, you really got to dive into Absolutely. the game itself. So it was just brilliant. And well, then someone challenges you, you feel more confident. You're like, yeah, I can accept that challenge. I right. might win this fight. Exactly. No, <laughs> so you would duel. <laughs> Yeah. Dueling was a thing, so you'd be like in you'd had to you'd have to go just outside of the city. It was against the rules in most cities to duel oh, okay. in the city. So you'd go outside the All city right. and you'd be like, I challenge you to a duel and a flag would drop down and you would have to accept or decline. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Couldn't fight people that didn't want to fight you. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would get in these duels and at the end of it, if you lost, you would beg for mercy. Sure. And or vice versa. It was so much freaking fun. So yeah, you might go out there and be like, oh, this guy looks like a motherfucker. Um, right. I don't think I want to duel him because he has all of the, the goodest stuff. His gear matches. I remember seeing somebody with matching <laughs> gear for the first time at level cap, and I'm like, that guy had to spend his whole fucking life doing this. How is this possible? Yep. Got to have those aesthetics, man. I got to my, my gears all got to look good together. It, he had a full set. It was Grand Marshal gear. It was the gear that you got from doing Battlegrounds, and it was pretty much impossible to get. Sure. From where I, from my perspective, people yeah. had it, but not many. It was a rarity, and there were two people on my server that I knew had full Grand Marshal, and I watched them duel. And I was just like, Jesus, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so epic. Yeah, I'm like, dude, they match and they're fighting and like, wow. Well, that's the Barbie doll effect. Oh, right? dude. Like, how, how many character creators or games that allow you to change separate pieces of armor where you will just spend hours trying to find the right look? I know I do. Grinding. That's the Barbie doll effect, right? Like. It is. I never it is, heard it called. That. Right. When you, well, when you think about it, what is a Barbie doll? It was a little doll you got. And it had clothes, but it also had other clothes you could buy, and you could change it, and you could change the accessories. Oh, yeah. And it was cool in that regard, but it was never marketed to boys. It was marketed to girls. Right. Right? So video games were where they gave us our Barbie doll effect, Shit. where we had our main character, and they let me change his gloves and his tunic and his pants and his boots, and I would spend hours just going through all the options, like what looks the best together. Right. <laughs> I look like an assassin. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like. <laughs> I look so incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, so getting into into World of Warcraft and like getting to play that game. Now I played it well past past Vanilla WoW, um, but I I met people that I'm friends with to this day. Sure, playing that silly game. Yeah, and it's most people have a basic understanding of it because it got as big as it did, and it got so big that South Park did an episode making fun of it. <laughs> that was the best. It was That is my favorite South Park episode. It Butters, was what are you doing? Oh, I'm playing World of Warcraft. I'm playing the dwarf character, Butters, sign out, create yeah. a new account, choose a different character. <laughs> but I'm a noob. Oh. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good, but like yeah. they hit the nail on the head with it, and like that was a, a lifestyle, and it was so much fun. Like I remember... Uh, when I, I was working a full-time job and I, I was a raid leader. So I joined right. this guild and they're like, Hey, we want you to be a raid leader. And I was like, I will do that. I will do that for you. He wants me to lead. <laughs> so, so I did. And they're like, go in, do what you do. And I'm in there, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> clicking away and freaking out. And it was so, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, good. So good dumb. Way back. Way so back. dumb. But man, like I lo <laughs> loved it. And uh, getting to like do that and play it for the period of time that I did, it was it was a blast. And like I know yeah. the game still exists, but not totally. like it was. Sure. Um, and it was. I, 
It was the most immersive game experience that I had ever had to that point in time. Right on. All right. Well, uh, my last one comes from the PlayStation 5. Ooh. And it should be no surprise to anybody. It's God of War Ragnarok. Now, the PlayStation 5 is very early in its life cycle, right? And mm-hmm. and one of, when, when, when my wife was guessing last night, one of the things she kept saying was, well, it's got to be God of War 2018, right? And I'm like, no. Nah. Great game. Not the best. Not least from that era. Not from me. Um, and the, the PlayStation 5 is early into its life cycle. So there will be things that will come along. There will be things that will come along that will blow what they just did with this game out of the water. Right. But it, it boils down to one simple truth for me. I have been hanging out with this murder hobo that is Kratos since 2005. Never in all of the games, even up to the one from 2018, never has this murder hobo made me feel genuine human emotion because he's just a murder hobo. He's a big, crazy, angry God who kills everybody and and does it in the most brutal fashion, right? It's, it's, it's murder porn is what it is, right? It's, it's, it's letting me literally torture and murder everyone in the most brutal way imaginable. Since 2005, that's who he's been. Even in 2018, he's a little softer there, but he's still a big, burly, angry murder hobo. <laughs> right. And when I got to Ragnarok and I saw genuine character growth, and not character growth that came out of nowhere, character growth that made sense based on everything this man's story has been since its inception, it made me feel real emotion. Who he was becoming, who he was trying to be, that he was trying to be better than he than he was, that he was trying to show his son that we have to be better. Everything about it was so emotional, character driven. And and does it have a big, bombastic, crazy ending? No. It's cool. Ragnarok is great. <clears throat> the, the 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 end of days for Asgard is great as a as a story beat, but during that conflict, it's very singularly focused on, again, the character's narrative arcs, right? So while this big, huge war is going on around you, it's, it's background, it's noise, because what matters is what we're doing here. And when I got into that fight with Thor, because Thor is very much Kratos. Thor is very much who Kratos used to be, a big, angry killer that destroys the destroyer, right? And he says that when they're having their fight. Kratos is going to spare him. And Thor says, you and me, we can't change. We're destroyers. It's who we are. It's in our blood. And Kratos says, no. We must be better for the sake of our children. My God, I lost it. Wonderful. I mean, I lost it. I got goosebumps with you just telling it. Exactly. It's a beautiful moment that shows this arc from the beginning to where we are now, where they they show Kratos these mirror images of who he used to be to reinforce his desire to be better for his son. Ugh. Wicked badass, man. I'm just talking about it. No, it's that's beautiful. so it's a cool. beautiful story. I never could have expected it to be that, uh, and I'm very pleased. And you've already to... played through it 14 <laughs> fucking times. Only five. It came out last month. <laughs> Only five. And there's a new game plus coming, so I'll play through it again when that happens. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's coming, I think, next month, so... <laughs> I'll play through it again when that happens. So (laughs) my number one, and we talked about this last week, is Beautiful Joe. Yeah. Beautiful Joe is us. Like, that's who he is. He is. I mean, sure. It's it's a very comic story. I would argue that Comic Zone did it better. Really? From Sega Genesis. Okay, okay. Yeah, making you feel like you were a comic book superhero and in a comic book. Sure. But Beautiful Joe's great. I'm not going to go on. I'm not going to stop you. So... (laughs) The thing that I thought was super fun about it is he's, you know, just the game starts off. You're in the movies with your girlfriend. Yes. And you're, a, he's a fucking nerd. Like yeah. he's a nerd. He's one of us. He's a comic book shop nerd. Yeah. And bad guy comes onto the screen, snatches up his girl. And he's like, fuck. What's happening? He, right. <laughs> so he has to go into movie world to fix this. And he has to undo all this evil in every level. It does, they do a good job of getting progressively harder. Yeah. Uh, the game had a great sliding scale. You become more powerful as you go, which you typically do in games. Yeah, it has like a Mega Man feel to it in that regard. A little bit, a you little get to bit, the yeah. End, you fight something and you get some upgrade. And right. You go on with the upgrade. Yeah, you learn a new technique is generally what yeah. it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
But he's unlocking his superpowers, and it's right. like so fucking cool. So you go from fat schlob to, you know, Mega Man, basically, because he does almost look like he Mega Man. He kind of looks like Mega Man, uh, yeah. It's that same style. Yeah. And it, <laughs> well, they, they borrowed, like, anime, comic book. Like, they, they did a good job at incorporating a lot of the geeky shit into that. Sure. The first time he did a shadow kick, I was like, Johnny Cage. Right. He's doing a shadow kick. <laughs> it's Johnny Cage shadow kick. It was so clever. <laughs> And like they, there's all these little tipping of the hats throughout the storyline that make you feel like that and stuff like that. So it's something it, 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 there's nostalgia there. There's all this stuff, but it's something that is still fresh. Sure. So yeah, beautiful Joe, hands down, my very favorite. All right. Well, I think we have we have varying, wildly different lists oh, between me and totally you. Totally different. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's great, man. I just I love video games. I love being transported to somewhere else, uh, walking in someone else's shoes. Hell yeah. Uh, oftentimes people that, you know, uh, make us reflect on ourselves, right? I mean, there's been plenty of games, and God of War Ragnarok I think is one of them, The Last of Us has, has been one of them, that kind of make us reflect on who we are as people. And, and I mean, if you, can, if you can make me think about my opinions more critically, great job. Bravo. Hats off to Great you. job. Yes. Mwah. Chef's kiss. <laughs> okay, so you guys need to uh, go to entertainthegeeky.com. There you can follow us on all of our social medias and all that fun stuff. Uh, remember, new podcast episodes come out on Wednesdays. Now, what I am trying to do is give you bit of bonus content if you're actually listening to the podcast episode otherwise you can um watch our videos on youtube i'm going to play around with the website here soon so that you can go just to the website to see the youtube videos as well sweet whatever works best for you there uh or you can go to youtube and subscribe that helps us out immensely so whatever you guys can leave do a there like be- do all those good things. oh yeah like yeah. Mm-hmm. comment on the shit that we do um we're Comment gonna, with your list. I want to hear what your list oh is. Oh my God, yeah. If there's we know that, each other. We're friends. If there's friends. something that I'm missing. Yeah, I want to hear what your list is. So yeah, give and us- And we'll give talk us, about it in a future episode. Put your list in the comments. Yeah. Uh, who was it? We had somebody comment on uh, on the- re- You were talking about Resident Evil, and he said um, Resident Evil 4 VR is incredible. That's what I've heard. I can't play VR. I have motion sickness. Okay, okay. So I can't do VR. I wish I could. It'd be great. I just have to, I could take a lot of Dramamine, I guess, and then do it. But that'd be the only time I'd be able to do it. (laughs) And then uh, I think we're going to do a book club with our top 10 books that we listed a while back. Um, we, all the details on that are not fleshed out yet, but it is something that we want to make you guys aware of. Uh, We want to share in on these stories with you. And then we're going to go through... All 10 books that him and I listed are not maybe the entire series, but just the first trade of those series yeah. so that you get a little sampling. If you love it, you can continue to read. If not, that's cool too. No harm, no foul. You got to check out something different. Right. Um, and then I, you know, we're, we're going to try to do some different stuff that maybe you didn't expect. And if you guys have recommendations there for what happens after the 10, let us know. Absolutely. Kick ass. Well, as always, stay geeky.